Did you know that TACMAN assays can also be used for SNP genotyping? While the assays use the same robust TACMAN chemistry, they contain two probes, and thus the analysis is different than when using a gene expression assay. This prompted our next question from Melissa from the IVIC in Venezuela, who didn't know why she was seeing amplification from both probes from a sample that she knew was homozygous. She asked us, how can I differentiate real homozygous samples from heterozygous ones? Great question. But first, let's review how the assay works to understand what we are seeing. Like a gene expression assay, a TACMAN genotyping assay contains sequence-specific forward and reverse primers to amplify the polymorphic sequence of interest. However, as we mentioned, the SNP assays are unique since they contain not one, but two TACMAN MGB probes. One probe labeled with VIC dye detects the allele 1 sequence. Another probe labeled with VAM dye detects the allele 2 sequence. Note that all genotyping assays use the same notation for the context sequence, which is the immediate sequence around the SNP. The first base in brackets is detected by the VIC probe, and the second base by the FAM probe. You can find all of this information online for every assay. The assays are combined with master mix, and 1 to 20 nanograms of purified genomic DNA and then amplified. Data can be collected in real time or offline and the analysis is taken from the endpoint read of the fluorescence. The sample will either be homozygous for allele 2, which means we will see mostly FAM dye, homozygous for allele 1, which means we will see mostly VIC dye, or a heterozygous which means there will be about equal contribution of signal from each dye. When viewed across an entire plate of samples, the data will typically resolve into three discrete clusters, assuming enough samples were used to display a normal distribution, given the minor allele frequency for your SNP. Note that there are times in which you would not expect to see three clusters, such as when the gene is on the X chromosome, if a copy number variation is involved, or if the minor allele frequency is extremely low. Let's take a closer look at what's happening in each reaction. For example, this sample is a VIC dye homozygous call. However, if we look at the real-time data, we'll see some amplification of both probes. Wait, why is that? Well, the probes are specific for their respective targets, so most of the time this is what occurs. But depending on the surrounding sequence, there can be a low amount of binding from the opposite probe. This is normal and one of the reasons why assays are a qualitative measure of the sample, not quantitative. The software makes calls based on the dye ratios and cluster orientation, and not the CT values. In this case, there is no traditional threshold to be used. If we look at two respective samples, we can see there is a difference in the amount of VIC amplification. So even though there can be some mismatch binding, we can still differentiate the clusters. Instead of a threshold, a quality value, which is the probability of a genotype call, is assigned to each well. Most of our software sets the default value for this at 95%, but you can adjust it manually if desired. A data point with a quality value lower than the default threshold does not pass quality specification and will be an undetermined call. By lowering the default threshold, you may change an undetermined call to a genotype call. Also note that running a no-template control sample is also helpful for proper calls to be made. We recommend using our free TACMAN Genotyper software with its advanced algorithm as the best program for making genotype calls. The software will do all of this for you, removing the guesswork from your analysis. Do you have a real-time PCR question? Just ask TACMAN on Twitter using the hashtag AskTACMAN, Facebook, or at lifetechnologies.com forward slash ask Tacman.